Hey, it's Art from Mind Your Microphone. In today's video, let's deepen our understanding of saturation and what it sounds like and how we can use it in our mixes. Saturation is an audio effect that basically fuses soft knee compression with harmonic generation to produce and enhance harmonic content in the audio signal, typically in a sonically pleasing way. Saturation happens in the analog circuits of analog audio equipment, even if only slightly, and often happens in tubes, tapes, transformers, and transistors. It is also available to us in the digital realm via audio plugins that emulate the effect. These audio plugins that emulate saturation are often modeled after hardware devices, but not always. In this video, we will be discussing the various types of saturation that are available to us, notably tube, tape, transistor, and transformer saturation, and also have a look at a few plugins that can help us achieve this saturation effect in the mix. But first, before we hop into saturation, we need to first understand harmonics. Harmonics are simply integer multiples of a fundamental frequency. If we have a pitched instrument playing an A, for example, then whatever that A note is, say 110 hertz, 220 hertz, 440 hertz, will be the fundamental frequency, and the harmonics will be integer multiples on top of that. The first harmonic is the same as the fundamental frequency. The second harmonic will be twice the fundamental. The third harmonic will be three times the fundamental. The fourth harmonic will be four times the fundamental, and so on and so forth. Even order harmonics, as the name would suggest, are the even number multiples of the fundamental or first harmonic. These are often described as being very musical and pleasing to the ear, especially in the first few harmonics of a sound, because they make up the octaves and the fifths before moving on to the upper harmonics of a sound. Odd order harmonics, then, are the odd number multiples of the fundamental or first harmonic. These are often described as being colorful, rich, and sometimes aggressive. They are the third, fifth, seventh, ninth harmonic, and so on and so forth. Instruments and sounds that have a defined pitch naturally follow the harmonic series, where they will have a fundamental frequency or first harmonic that defines their pitch, and then a series of overtones or harmonics that define their tone or timbre. This series of harmonics will have a unique profile, with each harmonic having its own amplitude envelope to define the tone or timbre of the sound. Saturation, once again, can add or enhance the harmonic content of audio signals that are being saturated. And while saturation is the product of entire circuits in the analog world, we can generalize the sound of certain components, notably tubes, tapes, transistors, and transformers. Each component and circuit will be unique, however, it's worth going through the generalities of these four components and their saturation characteristics. So let's get into it. Tube saturation happens as the amplification characteristics of the tube are pushed into nonlinearity. Pushing a tube beyond its linear range results in compression and asymmetrical soft clipping, which produces relatively strong even order harmonics, although odd harmonics are also produced especially as we push the tube harder and harder. Tape saturation happens when the input signal being printed to the tape leads the tape into nonlinearity as it tries to rearrange its magnetic particles to recreate that waveform. Overloading tape causes compression and symmetrical wave shaping, which produces relatively strong odd order harmonics. These odd order harmonics, combined with the often gentle high end roll off that tape provides, cause a rich and warm sound. Transistor saturation happens when the input to a transistor pushes that transistor out of its small linear range of operation. The exact electrical happenings depend on the type of transistor in question. The complex saturation profile of transistors cause both odd and even order harmonics to be produced, and the saturation is often described as being brighter, more aggressive, and less predictable than tape and tube saturation. Transformer saturation happens when the input signal going into a transformer saturates the magnetic core to a point where it can no longer increase in magnetic flux. It is largely symmetrical and therefore produces strong odd order harmonics. Due to the gentle rolling off of harmonics in the high end and upper mid range, transformer saturation often yields a rich and warm result. If you'd like to learn everything you need to know about mixing with saturation, I'd encourage you to check out my ebook, Mixing with Saturation. I will put a link to that in the description box down below. And with that, let's hop into Logic Pro, have a look and listen at a few different saturation plugins and these different styles of saturation and what they sound like in the mix. All right, here we are inside of Logic Pro to have a look at a few different saturation plugins and how we can use them in the mix. But before we get to using saturation in the context of a mix, I'd like to quickly go over the harmonic generation that we have with saturation. So you'll see here that I have a sine wave right here. We can have a quick listen to that. And notice on the Pro-Q3 graph right here, 
that the fundamental frequency of the sine wave is at 110 hertz. This is a sine at A2 as a note, which has a fundamental or first harmonic of 110 hertz. So sine waves only have a fundamental, which is why I'm using it for this demonstration. So any other frequencies above the 110 hertz, we can relate harmonically to this fundamental at 110. So I'll play the sine wave back. You can see right here that it will be at 110 hertz. So this entire audio signal only has one frequency, again, 110 hertz. We will use saturation to produce harmonics above this 110. So the saturation plugins we will be using in this demo are everybody's favorite, the Soundtoys Decapitator. We've also got the Waves Lil Tube, which is part of their Magma line. I got this one for free. I believe you can as well at Waves. I'll have links to each of these plugins and the Pro-Q3 here in the description box down below. Third up, we have the Saturation Knob by Softube. This is another freebie if you're interested. And then we have my go-to, which is the FabFilter Saturn 2. So let's close all these down. I will mute these and we'll open the decapitator and we will have our EQ right here. So with the decapitator, we have five different styles right here. The A is modeled after the Ampex 350 tape drive preamp. This is a tube driven preamp. So what we're going to get with this is a tube style saturation within the context of a greater circuit modeled again after the Ampex 350 tape drive preamp. The E style is modeled after the Chandler EMI TG channel. This is a transformer style saturation, again, combined with the entire circuit as it's a model. The N is modeled after the Neve 1057 input channel. This is built around a germanium transistor, but again, it's a complete circuit. T is modeled after the thermionic culture, culture vulture triode setting. So you have a tube style saturation with this. And then the P is modeled after the thermionic culture, culture vulture pentode setting. So we have another tube saturation right here with more odd order harmonic generation than the triode right here. So again, we have a tube style, we have a transformer style, we have a transistor style, and then two more tube style saturations with the Sound Toys Decapitator. All right, so let's start with style A, and I will play back this sine wave, adjust the drive, and talk over it so that we can have a look and an idea of the harmonic generation caused by this saturation plugin right here, the Sound Toys Decapitator. I will bring down the volume of the sine wave because the saturation may make it a bit loud, and so that you can hear me while I speak over the sound right here. So let's have a listen now. So immediately we hear that it's different than just the sine wave. I'll toggle this off so that we can have a listen. So there's a little bit more going on. And as we increase this, we see the harmonic content becoming greater along with the fundamental energy becoming greater. But if we bring this all the way down, we see that we have our fundamental again at 110. Right here we have our second harmonic at 220. That's pretty pronounced. We have another one at 330 right here, which is not as pronounced. And then another even order harmonic right here at 440. And then 550 odd, 660 even, and it rolls off pretty quick. Now as we increase the drive here on the tube style, we can hear it getting and having more harmonic energy. And as I turn it up, even though this is a tube style saturation, we see that there's a whole bunch of harmonics going all the way up here. This is rather distorted at this point. If I bring this up, you can see how the relationship of the harmonics changes quite dramatically as I adjust the drive of this saturation. Let's move on to E now, which again is a transformer style saturation. See that these drop a little bit and the roll off is quite a bit more. Let's bring up the drive. So here we have a strong second harmonic 
strong fourth harmonic, but the harmonic here at 330 is not very strong at all. That being said, the fifth harmonic right here is strong, the sixth is lower, and so we have a situation where every third harmonic is not nearly as strong as the two preceding it. We can get a whole bunch of different profiles depending on how we're driving with this saturation style. Let's move on now quickly to the transistor style. So all the way up we have strong odd order harmonics and the even order harmonics are a little bit weaker. Bring that down. And it pretty much maintains that relationship throughout the drive right here. Let's go to the last tubes real quick. We see here that, yeah, it's at each harmonic there are peaks, regardless of what saturation style we harmonic generation regardless of what style we're using. We'll go to the pentode after the triode and I'm just sweeping through the different drive settings here one last time so that you can get an idea of the harmonic generation of the saturation plugin. All right let's move on now to the waves magma lil tube. Obviously, this is a tube style saturation plugin. And let's see, as we bring this drive up, we should expect strong even order harmonics to happen. You can hear that this is a pretty subtle effect compared to the decapitator, but we see that harmonics are being generated over here in the Pro Q3 graph. As we crank this all the way up, we can see that it's actually an odd order harmonic, this third harmonic right here that is the strongest, although we do have the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth, and so on. Even order harmonics are also pretty strong. So the even order harmonics as we move further away from the fundamental are stronger than the odd order harmonics. However, the strongest right here again is the third harmonic at 330 hertz. All right, let's move on now to the saturation knob by Softube. This is a simple single knob saturation effect. And right here we have three different saturation types. So the keep low focuses distortion on the mids and highs to keep the low end intact. The neutral type will saturate the full frequency spectrum and the keep high will focus distortion on the lows and mids to keep the high end relatively clean. So it's essentially a saturation run through parallel EQ. And let's drive up, put this to neutral and drive up this saturation right here. We can see in the Pro Q3 that we're getting strong odd order harmonics. And now we're kind of evening them out and even driving the even order harmonics stronger once this is all the way up to the top. If we toggle this to keep high, we get more high end saturation. One key thing here that I'm trying to show is I'm sweeping through the entire range of saturation here to show you how the harmonic content will shift depending on how much saturation is applied. So this is truly a non-linear process where the more saturation we give a signal, the more varied the effect will be in terms of harmonic generation. So that is the soft tube saturation knob. Let's move on quickly now to my favorite, the Saturn II. And with this one, we have our styles right here. We've got four settings for tube, four settings for tape. We've also got amp distortion settings. We've got general saturation right here. We've got transformer saturation and then effects right here. So we aren't gonna go through all of these in here. Let's just start with warm tube and I will sweep this through. So as the warm tube gets driven harder and harder, the stronger the odd harmonics are, which is a little bit different. If we bring this back to a more modest amount, we see here that the second order harmonic is the strongest as per usual. If we go to tape,
tape. I'll go to warm tape and sweep through. We can see that it's really the odd order harmonics that are really being driven right here. So there are basically no even order harmonics that are produced by this warm tape function. So we've got our fundamental at 110 once again, and we've got our harmonics at 330, 550, 770, 990, and so on and so forth. So very little, if any, even order harmonics produced by this specific style right here. We'll skip the amp, we'll go to gentle saturation, and we've got a similar effect right here to the tape, warm tape. If we go heavy distortion, we'll see that there's a lot more high end and it's almost as if it's flattened off and each harmonic gets equal amplitude. Now let's go to transformer, gentle transformer, and we see that all the way cranked, we have strong odd order harmonics, at least for the third and fifth. If we bring this back, we can see that the harmonics get lesser and lesser until we come back to the fundamental itself. All right, and now let's listen to saturation in the context of a mix. So right here, I have a mix that I'm working on. This is just a small section of it. You can see that I've got some routing and quite a bit of processing going on already. And what I've done here is I've taken all of my saturation plugins and dropped them to the bottom. So this is not how I would normally mix. These saturation plugins are often somewhere else in the signal chain. However, just for the purposes of demoing in this video, I've switched up the order of my processing slightly to make it easier to AB between having saturation and not having saturation. So you'll see here I have a few of each of the plugins that we looked at. I've got the saturation knob here on the drum bus, the soft tube option. I've got the magma lil tube right here on the bass and guitars right here. That's the waves option. I've got Saturn 2, which is actually what I'm using on the mix. And then I've got a few instances of Decapitator as well. So if we look at the different saturation plugins right here, you'll see that I'm not driving them terribly hard. Remember that 40% in the earlier parts of this demo didn't really produce that much harmonic generation, although that was only dealing with a single fundamental. When we have a full sound that is full of harmonics, you have to factor in that each harmonic in the sound is getting its own profile of harmonics generated from this saturation. So in the mix, we typically want to drive our tracks a little bit on the conservative side with saturation just to get a little bit more flavor and grit to the mix. So this one is at 40% on the kick with the Saturn. I hit the snare pretty hard. The Decapitator is a pretty wild plugin, so you don't need a whole lot of it. So this drive at just under four is actually rather aggressive for this style. Saturation once again, I'm hitting this a little bit harder at 65% drive. Here's another snare, which I'm hitting with about 50%, although this is mixed quite low in the mix. So kick, snare, snare. The drum bus I'm hitting with a little bit of the saturation knob from soft tube on the keep low. So this is again, not saturating the low end, rather saturating the high end to keep that kick intact. I'm already saturating the kick a little bit, but I don't want too much distortion in the low end. The bass is being saturated by the little tube. Bass and guitar sound great through tube saturation in my opinion. So I've also got this on the guitar. Remember that the little tube was pretty gentle. And so I'm driving this one perhaps a little bit harder than I would with the Saturn or especially the Decapitator. And then on the parallel drum bus right here, I've got the Decapitator again with the drive at about four. And one more over here, we have our horn bus with Saturn two. This is warm tape setting with 65% drive. And so what I'm going to do is select all of these tracks so I can quickly toggle these saturation plugins on and off without affecting any other tracks. So we'll just have a listen without saturation and then I'll bring it in and the difference will be subtle, but you'll just hear a little bit more character and a little bit more fullness in the mix thanks to the saturation that I am applying to the mix. So here we go. Without saturation.
we won't get into each of the individual tracks in this particular video, but just to show you how a little bit of saturation can go a long way in the mix. So we've covered the harmonic generation side by looking at the sine wave and the single fundamental frequency. And we also had a look here and listen to how saturation can be used to great effect in the mix, even though we are only using it subtly. If you found this video useful, I'd encourage you to hit that like button and subscribe for more content here at the My New Microphone YouTube channel. All right, let's hop out of Logic Pro. If you want to learn more about mixing in a practical way, I put together a free guidebook for you. Just click that first link in the description box down below, sign up to my newsletter, and I will email the guidebook to you right away. It goes through the step-by-step -step workflow that I go through in my own mixes and helps you make the right decisions at the right times to make better and more consistent mixes. So if you're interested, again, the first link in the description box down below. If you like this video, I'd encourage you to hit that like button. And I will also put a few other videos up here in the top left and top right corner, as per usual, that I think you will enjoy here on the My New Microphone YouTube channel. So click on one of these videos next, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.